Hi everybody and welcome to a new episode of Minecraft Disney World. This is the series in which I walk around and explore a Minecraft one-to-one -one scale recreation of a ride from Disney World or an attraction from Disney World and talk about the history of the actual attraction in the real resort. Today we're going to be taking a look at an attraction that I think uh, doesn't get a lot of attention these days and often gets shrugged off but is really a interesting attraction that has a lot of rich history both in how it came to be but in terms of also what sort of legacy it's left and that is the Country Bear Jamboree in the Magic Kingdom. Now, uh, like a lot of attractions at Disney World, they have some roots in Disneyland. This one actually has roots in a project that never saw the light of day that Walt was working on, which was called Disney's Mineral King Ski Resort. Now, in the 60s, Walt was a big fan of skiing. He wanted to develop and build a ski resort in Mineral King Valley, California, and he was concerned that... You know, people would have fun skiing, but at the end of the day, there wouldn't be anything to do to keep people entertained. So what he had done was assign this project to Marginer Mark Davis and Albertino, and the two of them worked on what would be a sort of bear-themed dinner show. And they came up with a whole bunch of different uh, types of bear groups. There was a mariachi band, there was a marching band, Dixieland bears, things like that. Uh, and it would be in the this restaurant show, and they decided ultimately to pick the one that would have a country twang. Now, unfortunately, Walt d passed away, and the project uh, of this Mineral King Ski Resort ended up never really coming together and happening. But the project of this show did get developed further, and ultimately what they decided to do was move this over to Walt Disney World. And it's funny because it's very rare, but this is one of the instances in which the Walt Disney World version came before the Disneyland version. Uh, it opened up. Uh, in 1971, opening day of Walt Disney World in the Magic Kingdom, it had music that was um, made by uh, Imagineer Exitensio, and it was uh, had a musical director named George Bruns. Exitensio, you might know, did a lot of music for like Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion. Um, and the show ended up being such a great success that Disney ended up coming up with a Disneyland version to put over in their park. And because it was so successful, what they actually ended up doing was they built two theaters next to each other that would run uh, at the same time to double their capacity. Uh, the show itself, you know, features a bunch of animatronic bears putting on this sort of like country musical show. It's sort of the root and the main inspiration for that sort of, I guess you could say, cliche of, of you know, the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic animal band show. Chuck E. Cheese, of course, was um, pioneered by Nolan Bushnell, who's the person who's also behind Atari. And Nolan Bushnell is a, you know, self-professed big fan of Disney. So I think it's no stretch to imagine that uh, the Country Bear Jamboree was a huge inspiration for that sort of idea that, you know, became popularized with Chuck E. Cheese and has sort of become a cliche on itself today. Um, so it really isn't too much of a stretch to say that this attraction was sort of where it all started, you know, that whole concept. Uh, the main bear is Henry, he's the master of ceremonies, and what's notable is that he was voiced by Peter Renaday, who you might know as he was the original ghost host in The Haunted Mansion. He was Captain Nemo in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, not the movie, but the attraction, and his voice was actually um, heard throughout many attractions at Disney World. Now, like I mentioned, this attraction was really popular. Uh, so much so in Disneyland that aside from the two theaters they put in there, they actually created a whole seventh land of the park just based around the idea of this attraction. It was originally a, an area called Indian Village, but in 1972, it was known as Bear Country. And then later, they changed it in 1988 again to what we now know as Critter Country, and that was actually for Splash Mountain and the ramp up to the opening of Splash Mountain. And then Tokyo Disneyland also has its own version, which opened in April of 1983. Now, what's interesting is that the Country Bear Jamboree is also the first for something else, which is sort of the holiday theming of an attraction. Uh, in 1984, they debuted uh, what was called the Country Bear Christmas Special at the Magic Kingdom and in Disneyland, and it featured like different songs and it put on a slightly different show. And today, I think you think popularly that concept is manifested with the Haunted Mansion, right? And the Christmas, they sort of retheme it to the Nightmare Before Christmas, but that wasn't the first instance of, of Disney doing something like that. So if you're a fan of that happening with the Haunted Mansion, I think you have Country Bear Jamboree to thank for the, the whole concept. 
Over time, of course, the attraction lost some popularity, uh, so much so that in Disneyland they closed the ride in September of 2001 to make room for the many adventures of the Winnie the Pooh, which opened in April of 2003. Uh, in Disney World, it remained open, but they refurbed it in August of 2012. They took out two songs, Pretty Little Devilish Mary and Fractured Folk Song, and they actually cut some of the dialogue out. And all in all, they cut down the show to be about four to five minutes shorter than it was uh, previously. And of course, who can forget the movie? <laughs> in July of 2002, a movie called The Country Bears came out and it, uh, featured many of the main bears from the Country Bear Jamboree, and it was sort of a tie-in, which was weird because it came out a year after the Disneyland version closed. Um, and it, by all means, completely tanked. It had an estimated budget of $35 million and had a worldwide gross of $18 million, so it didn't even make up its budget, and it probably hurt any chances of us seeing some sort of Country Bear movie crossover at any time in the future. It opened number six at the box office and was just pretty much universally panned. So there you have it, just a quick look at the Country Bear Jamboree in Walt Disney World. It's got an interesting history, it's the kind of attraction that is understandably sort of losing steam over the years as it gets older, but it has an interesting past to it that you don't see very often with attractions at Disney World, and is certainly something that you probably want to check out at least once. It might not be the attraction that you go to every time you're down there in the parks, but it's a cool way to experience a piece of living Disney history, especially since Walt was involved with it in the final years of his life, and it had just such an odd sort of path to fruition. Anyway, I thank you for watching. Whatever you're doing this week, make the most of it because it makes it that much better. And I hope to see you all next time for the next episode of Minecraft Disney World. Bye, everybody.